that really goes. You, the most stupid birds in the world. She's agile. Welcome along guys to a blustery February and the new Suzuki GSX-S GT. Now this is Suzuki's first shot at a proper GT machine, obviously heavily based on the new GSX-S which came out last year. This is with fairing, comfort, panniers and for the first time on a Suzuki a full TFT dashboard. Yes, Suzuki have finally joined the 21st century with their displays. So today we're going to take this bike on a bit of a run. We're heading back to Dorset. We're heading to Harry's Rocks today, which is a natural rock formation going out into the Solent. Um, it's about 200 miles, about 100 miles there, 100 miles back. It'll give us the opportunity to test out the fuel range, the comfort, the handling, all the aspects which make a good GT bike. So if that's of interest, stick around, grab yourself a cuppa, make yourself comfortable and chop C. Roll that intro. So stepping aboard the GT, you notice it's quite a big machine. There's lots of fairing. You've got nice big upright bars. The seat feels really comfortable. I've set the sat-nav. We now have the destination set on the Suzuki sat-nav. Six and a half inch TFT on this bike now. I don't know if it's any it doesn't seem to be in an adjustable position. We'll go through a little bit more about the sat-nav and stuff in a minute and how you access it all. But first of all, let's fire her up. And you know what we've got to do? Let us do a quick noise test. She sounds sporty. Steering lock is pretty darn decent. I mean, it's no adventure bike, but you've got a good lock there, actually. Quite a good turning circle as he nearly drops the bike. But pretty reasonable, you know, good sort of a naked bike turning circle not a sports bike turning circle and I think that's of course because it's got these high high bars it's not got clip-ons you know high clip-ons it's full high bars on this and I'm not sure if this bars these bars are exactly the same as what is on the GSX-S you know the naked version of this bike I think to be honest the ergos are identical I've got a feeling that front end and those bars are identical to the naked version of the bike you know the rear subframe is all different because it's got obviously panniers to attach so the rear subframe's all beefed up and the seat is definitely different the seat feels very well padded so regular viewers will know i'm six foot two um 20 ish stone so a, a big old unit it's fair to say and uh, i find this position really comfortable you're very upright you know my back is almost perfectly straight and vertical when my hat you know my arms are down it, it's, it's a very comfortable position the pegs feel moderate i would say certainly not sports bike high a nice sort of bend to my knees um yeah very very comfortable i think this is definitely going to be a bike and my initial feeling is it's, i'm not going to get in any discomfort on my uh, sort of two hour trip down to dorset today and back again because this feels like a very very comfortable machine and that's exactly what you want from a GT bike isn't it the seat also feels quite wide so they've not got that problem like they have on adventure bikes like the V4S I was riding the other week where the seats really thin you know not very wide so you can get your legs down easier so shorter riders can get their legs down because this is a GT machine it's lower to the ground the seat is nice and wide it can accommodate my large backside quite easily so today the plan will be as i mentioned at the beginning old harry's rocks now this is a natural chalk rock formation on the dorset coast going out into sea it, you know it, it looks quite incredible when it's just basically been eroded over thousands of years and parts of it have fallen in so you've got like these rock stepping stones going out to the sea it looks amazing i've got my drone with me so we also get some drone footage but we've got to park the bike i think it's a pub we've got a park in and then we've got to walk for about a mile down to where the rocks are on like a little track because we're going to be seeing what fuel range we get out of this bike i've reset the trip on here took me <laughs> about three minutes to work out how to a real three minutes to work out how to reset the trip it's re 
it's really difficult and I can't even remember how I did it now but I have reset the trip we'll see how many miles we get out of this bike it has a 19 litre tank remember their GSX-S had a 19 litre tank which is quite strange for like a naked bike well they have they've had to do nothing to the tank range on this when they turned it into a GT because the bike naturally had 19 litres and that should in theory you know if you're riding this as economically as possible Suzuki say you can get just under 200 miles per tank well I don't think we're going to do that today not ridden more real world I want to see how this bike performs so I'm expecting I don't know 150 miles would be nice we will see a little bit of beanage oh that quick shifter is smooth yeah that was one of the things which was new to the bike you know last year the GSX-S got that quick shifter and blipper the engine is exactly the same as the GSX-S 150 horsepower 108 newton meters of torque so it's got plenty of punch this bike well, let's give it a little bit of beans let's have a feel for what those 150 horses have to offer Rocket ship. That's, that feels like a quick 150 horsepower. That's a real 150 horsepower. That really goes, you know, it's a straight four, so it winds up a little bit to it. But when that kicks in, my God, <laughs> it's a quick machine. I mean, I think we all know that, you know, this, this bike's engine is based on the old GSXR K5, the 2005 GSXR engine. which is, you know, renowned as one of the best ever Suzuki engines. It's not exactly the same. They've had a play around with it, obviously, but that's what it's based on. You know, it's not based on the new GSX-R engine with the variable valve timing. The suspension feels very, very nice, actually. Suzuki normally do this. They normally know how to set up suspension on bikes so you get a sporty feel, but also decent ride quality. This is definitely edging on the sporty side. I mean, this GT bike is a performance machine. I can t just getting on it, I can tell this is geared up for performance. It's not, you know, just a Grand Tourer, which is just soaking the views. It's very much a ride bike. And uh, yeah, it's quite a firm ride. It's got KYB suspension, fully adjustable up front. And uh, I think this one has been set up for a little bit of a sporty feel. A little bit of excitement. So you've got that, but it also soaks the bumps up. So, you know, it's got a very, I'd say, a, the perfect setup for this type of sports GT. Pull, 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 pull. A little while to wind up, but she gets there. Front brake is, uh, it feels a little bit wooden, <laughs> to be completely honest. But one of... Suzuki's are renowned for having excellent ride quality, you know, suspension setup, quality of the engines, the feel of the gearboxes, but they're also known for not having the best brakes. And uh, this, it, this falls into that category. There's lots of power there, but they just feel a tiny little bit wooden, I would say. A little bit of a wooden feeling on the front brake. It's like, I don't know, it, when you've ridden bikes, like the V4S of Ducati Multistrada I was riding a couple of weeks ago with the Stylema and the full Brembo setup, you just feel there's a little bit more control to that power. These are pretty powerful and they bite, but it feels a bit wooden at the lever, but they're good enough. Look at these idiots. You, the most stupid birds in the world. As I say, the brakes are okay. <laughs> they get you out of uh, problems like that. It's going to land right in front of me again. fast it feels sporty I can actually feel the tarmac really well as well I'm getting a lot of feedback through the suspension it's not just wafting over everything which you know if you've got to do mega miles in the saddle I guess you may want a bit more of a wafter as I say as I said you know this is definitely a sporty setup you could ride to the south of France on this and then when you get to the twisties You've got a bike which can handle, can, can take those corners, you know. Flipper. 
Yeah, a little bit of a wooden feeling going on the brakes there, a tiny bit. Power! Lovely quick shifter. Yeah, this is very good, you know. This is very, very good. So let's have a little bit of a sit rep. Let's go back to the main menu. It's a bit of a pain to get back and forth between your sat nav and the main screen. That's a little bit of a criticism. Also for this bike, you've got all new switch gear here with like a little wheel. And actually I've got really big Knox winter gloves on and I can still use these, you know, the wheel and the buttons here, even with massive gloves on. So that's quite impressive. I like that. Um, so we've done so far 34.6 miles. We're doing on average 44 miles per gallon. It reckons it's nine degrees. Mm, that could be a little bit optimistic in my eyes. And the range, the range, it's saying we've got 131 mile range left. So yeah, that ain't too bad, is it? That ain't too bad. Right, we're going to be coming into Salisbury soon and then cutting across down to Dorset. So uh, check back in a minute. And the roads, I think, are starting to dry out a little bit. One thing the GT does come with, which is rather nice, is cruise control. So you've got a proper cruise control system on this. But it's a GT bike. It needs these sort of extras, doesn't it? So you've got a little button here to enable the cruise control. Then you've got a, wheel, a button down rocker wheel here. You get the green light on the dash. Hit the set button. Bingo, your cruise control is set. And then you've got a little up and down rocker to go faster and slower. But what is fantastic about this bike is it only costs 11 and a half thousand pounds. This is a lot of bike with the sat-nav integration, cruise control, 11 and a half thousand pounds. Unbelievable. That doesn't include the panniers. But these big 36 litre panniers are an extra 760 pound, I think it is. So for 12 and a half grand-ish, just under, you've got a full GT bike, got traction control, cruise control, TFT with proper decent sat-nav integration and panniers for 12 and a half thousand pounds. In this day and age, that seems like an absolute bargain. The time now is quarter past 10. I've, I've set off about nine, so I've been on the bike for about an hour and a quarter. And I can tell you, this seat is very well padded. You know, because I'm sat quite upright, I've got all the weight on my backside, but the seat is plush and thick enough to accommodate that and wide enough, more importantly. So yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with the comfort so far. I'm feeling, a, if, if I've got any discomfort starting anywhere, it's probably in my legs where I've got my feet up on the pegs, you know, so I could probably get off within the next half hour just to stretch my legs for five minutes and I'll be five minutes and I'll be absolutely fine. But if I had to say anything so far, it's just my legs could do with a bit of a stretch, but it's absolutely perfect on the comfort. All the clutch operation is super smooth. You know, when you when you come into town like this, it's very, very we want to be over here. Oh, he's in the wrong lane, he's in the wrong lane. He's caught that right up, hasn't he? He's caught that right up, he's in the wrong lane. Thank you. But when you come into town, everything is easy. Clutch operation. Is it, this is one of the things Suzuki does excel at, you know? They make bikes very, very easy and nice to ride. And this is no exception. Nationals. Get it in some higher speed corners and it feels very stable. Yeah, handling is very nice. Changes direction quickly. Brakes a little bit wooden, but it's fine, you know. <laughs> On the fresh bit of tyre there. Look at this road. This is lovely. Oh, she's, she's agile. She's agile. Dunlop Road Smart Twos, I think it's got. I 
would be perhaps tempted to put something a little bit more sticky on there because it's, you know, they're there for a bit of longevity, aren't they? And a bit of all-weather riding, I suppose. But you know, it's got the credentials, I think, to have, go for something a bit more sporty on the tyre front. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with the handling of that. Beautiful. As I said on my Multistrada review, this is the ultimate sat-nav solution. You know, not just flashing up, turn left, turn right, a full overlay of the map, you know, like you're running on your phone. Now this is the Sigic app, I think it's called. The standard maps on the bike are very, uh, it's, not very it's not very good, to be perfectly honest. You, know, you put your destination and it gives you the route, but it doesn't. if you go off that destination, it doesn't reroute you or anything. So the, the Sigic one I find very, very good. It has things like speed limits, traffic, and this runs, you know, this Suzuki My Spin will run some approved third party apps. So you can run other things apart from what you can just run on the bike. So it's almost like a little Android system, you know. And the Sidekick is one of the apps you can run. So I'm using that for the SatNav, which is much better. But let's just come out of the uh, the whole SatNav thing and let me show you the, the base display because even the base display is rather tasty. Ooh, like this left-hander. So well done, Suzuki. That is a very, very good first attempt at a TFT. I think it's probably, I say the first TFT, they've probably been running them in their cars for quite some time. So um, it's probably a lot of the car technology in that, but it's very good. If that screen, I'm getting air here. So below here, it's lovely, calm. My chest is very calm here, but at the bottom of my helmet, that is where the wind is. So you're sort of getting a lot of air directed at your helmet, but it's not just at the top of your helmet where it causes that, you know, your head to get buffeted around. It's fine. Uh, screens are tricky. You know, screen height is tricky. As I say, I'm six foot two. If I was a bit shorter, then maybe it's a bit better. I know you can get two different versions of the screen. There's no adjustment on this. There's no up and down, but there is two versions. Maybe with a little add-on screen here, it would just deflect a little bit off, but I, I am getting a little bit on the helmet. It's not bad and it's not buffety, but I'm, I'm getting a full face of helmet air. Helmet air. Doesn't sound very nice, does it? Higher speed corners again. Yeah, this is the beauty of a GT bike. You know, adventure bikes are great, but they're for having adventures on. He's had a whoopsie. Adventure bikes are only, you know, adventure bikes to me are a little bit flawed if you don't want to go off-road. If you're going somewhere where you're going to be going on off-road surfaces, on tarmac, you know, a proper adventure, let's say, then yeah, adventure bikes, that makes sense. But if your journey is 100% tarmac, for me, a GT bike makes more sense. It's got everything an adventure bike's got from a comfort point of view. Perhaps your legs are a little bit more cramped than what they would be on an adventure bike. But you've got the panniers, you've got the screen, you know, you've got the extras, you know, the cruise control, all that sort of stuff. But you've got a 17 inch front wheel for optimized road holding. You've got suspension, which is optimized for road riding. You know, it's not extra long travel to, for when you do want to go off road. Adventure bikes for me, are a little bit of a compromise and if you're not going off-road on them I don't see the point if I want to do distance I'd rather have a GT machine very quick swap to change the batteries just at Corf Castle actually Corf Castle is here this was one of the destinations I was thinking of doing as part of this video it's a real old ruins one thing I've noticed which is a real pain in the bottom is you can only get into the uh, the My Spin app when the bike is stopped. So you've got to stop. If you want to come out of that map mode and go back to the main screen, you know, to check the air temperature or something. It's got most things on, uh, on the map screen, but if there's something you've got to go back to, um, it's a bit of a pain in the bum because you've got to be stopped to do it. So I don't like that. And also, you've got to launch the My Spin app every time, from what I can see. There we go, connecting. So because I turned the bike on and I forgot to go back and seem to have to go to back into the MySpin app to get things initialised. I'm down to 30% battery on here as well. 
so it has a proper Kilburn battery. It's the old steam railway. <laughs> we spin the bike around so you can see the old steam train. Yeah, we just missed it. There we go, Corfe Castle at the top there. Ruins, don't know much about it, but maybe a visit for another day. Right, old Harry's rocks, they're up here somewhere. Old Harry and his old rocks. Apparently it was a smuggler. A smuggler called Harry used to go past the rocks every day and they got called Old Harry's Rocks. Don't know how true that is. <laughs> That's what Wikipedia told me. I'll right, we'll go left here. Bit of traffic building up now. This is very nice, isn't it? Look at this old town. I don't know where this is. What town this is. But it's rather old. Oh, through the town, let's have a little bit of that delicious cruise control. Set it at 30. Bosh. 30 through the towns. I've been on the bike now for two hours, 20 minutes, and I'm perfectly comfortable. I, I, knew, I could tell as soon as I got on this, it was going to be a comfortable bike, and it really is. That seat is wide and well padded. Perfect comfort. None of that sore body on this one. She's a beauty, and because you're upright, you've got the wide bars. I've got no weight on my wrists either. Perfectly comfortable. You could do some serious mileages on this. You really could. And we've got a bit of dry road as well. It is definitely a sporty ride. It is, you know, the suspension. It's not jarry. It, fe it feels relatively plush, but it's definitely sets a little bit sporty, you know got a little bit of you can feel the texture of the tarmac you can feel the vibrations from the road coming through the bike but that's the way I'd have it I you know I'd want that feedback I don't want to be whooshed over the road surface and not feel you know that the texture this GT bike is definitely got a sporty nature to it it's not a wafter it's not just going to waft you across continents without you knowing what you're riding on this is a riders a rider's GT machine, I would say. Left at the garage. Talking of garages, how are we for fuel? We've got just under half a tank. Like so, just under half a tank. So actually, pretty decent, this one, it says. Unsuitable for HGVs is always a worry. 60 limit, it tells me this road is. Doesn't mean you have to do 60 down here, but we can try. This is a little gnarly one, isn't it? I don't, I don't know. The sat that's taking me, oh, that's a big drop. Well, the sat that's taking me down here, but it's a great way to test out what the bike is like on these little gnarly lanes. And you've got a lot of control, you know, a lot of control where you place that front wheel. And because of that nice upright position, you know, you're not like if you come down here on a sports bike, you'll be cursing because you had all the weight on your wrists. You know, it's like, it's a naked bike's position, this. It's the same position as a naked, but just with the fairing. So, you know, that is, uh, that is quite a nice idea, I think. This is a good test for the suspension, though, because this is a rough, gnarly surface here. And I'm not getting thrown about, even though I've been banging on about how sporty the suspension is on this. You know, it's not so stiff that it can't deal with these sorts of surfaces. And, yeah, it's absolutely fine. Hey, <laughs> my buddy. Yeah, I shouldn't be down here, I know. Bloody sat now. I don't need an adventure bike for these sorts of lanes. I'm perfectly capable and able to do it on this. I don't need a GS to go down here. Ah, I think that's it there, look. I think you won't be able to see it. Yeah, I can see it. It's up there. The peninsula up there, the other side of the sea. But the problem is there's no roads going close to it, so you must have to walk along along here. Oh, there's the sea, look, there's there. I can just see the edge of the, the little chalk islands. South Beach, yeah, the Banks Arms Inn, I think is where the car park is. <laughs> my battery's just run out of my phone by the look of it. I've just been kicked out of the app there. 
South Beach car park, this is it. Let's go look at some rocks. The best thing about the GT, in my eyes, is really the value for money. What you're getting for your money is quite remarkable in this day and age. I mean, £11,500 for the bike, cruise control, you know, all the toys, okay, heated grips are extra, but you've got cruise, you've got quick shifter and blipper, all included, and £12,450 or something with the panniers. 36 litre panniers you can get two full-size crash helmets in there i had my x-spirit in there while i walked down to the beach you know it fits in the panniers it is you know it's really remarkable the ride's lovely it's sporty it's got masses of performance yeah okay it's missing an imu it's missing the very latest electronics you know lean sensitive electronics i don't really care <laughs> for that money I don't really care. Tiny little gripes is just when you go in and out between the sat nav and back to the main screen, you can't do that while you're rolling, which is a bit irritating. That sort of stuff can perhaps be fixed with an update. I guess that's some sort of safety feature they've tried to build into it, so you're not playing around. Other little gripes is this, you know, this indicator button is tricky because you've got the rocker switch next to it, but they're tiny gripes, which overall don't matter a thing. They don't matter a thing, but yeah, I'm really impressed with this. I guess the biggest competition for this is the Kawasaki Z1000SX, is it called? You know, the non-supercharged one. I think that is a little bit more expensive than this. I'm not sure. I think it's a little bit more expensive than this. So perhaps we need a comparison between the GT and the SX Kawasaki just to know which one is best. So perhaps that's something for Greg to come later in the year. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I do really like these types of videos where we go to a destination and you know we review the bike on the way. I haven't quite finished because we've still got just under half a tank of fuel left. Let me just flick through the uh, the trip info. So we've actually done 102 miles so far today and the range it says we've got another 64 miles left in it and i have not been riding taking it easy on this this has been <laughs> having a gunning today so you've got 170 mile range i'll let you know exactly how much fuel this got i will top it up on the way back and i'll, I'll bring that i'll tell you to show you that after the outro but uh, i'm really impressed so there we go guys thanks for watching as always and i will see you on the next video cheers park we just want petrol I've got 14 miles left on the range now 14 miles and we have done 154 miles so yeah I, I think about I think about 17 uh, 170 miles if ridden spiritedly <laughs> I've not been hanging around you could probably get 200 miles if you're gonna absolutely ride very very carefully but uh, yeah not bad 170 miles real world riding and now we've got to try and find some fuel <laughs> here we are bingo see you later guys